Good morning, everybody. I'm Teresa Perrin, and I want to discuss with you AVCT, the delisting, the bankruptcy, and what to expect now. Guys, for full transparency, as I disclosed on Twitter, I did sell the majority of my position. At that time um, that I tweeted, I had left 300 shares on. Um, I had it split up between two different accounts where I kept them in. Um, those of you that know me know I like to trade in multiple accounts because I don't trust any broker. Um, but that being said, I did have sell orders in both of those because as I stated, I was considering buying more Hellbiz. Um, and the sell order filled in one and the other, it didn't. Um, so I'm down to, I believe it's 140 shares because I think I had 160 for some strange reason and 140 in the others still left. Um, again, I was going to sell them all. It didn't have complete fills in some cases. Um, so that's what I'm left with. And guys, to be perfectly honest with you, I am most likely going to sell this on Tuesday. Um, or, you know, there's only 140 shares. I might let it drag on till the 19th. Um, but I am certainly not going to hold it if it continues to go down. Guys, if we do for some miraculous reason get a run in this stock, which I still think it's a small possibility, not a big one, and certainly not worth taking the risk in my honest opinion, because in my opinion, it's more likely to go to zero, which it's not going to go to zero, but let's say a few cents um, before it goes back, like up to, let's say, two or three dollars. So I said, why hold this? Why can continue to see it drop? Um, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. But there's a lot of things floating around and there's a lot of concerns I have, guys. Because, yes, originally I was hoping we would get a Revlon type move with the bankruptcy because a lot of times um, when the company files to appeal NASDAQ's delisting status, which this company is not, you need to be aware of that, they're not filing to appeal it. So that is the problem with this and why I no longer feel that it has a run in it because everybody knows that. When Revlon went to file for bankruptcy, the difference was they had appealed and they had a bunch of court hearings and every time a court hearing happened and something positive came out of it, or even the hint of something positive for shareholders, it would rock it. Um, that is not the case in my opinion, because if we were going to see the rocket, I think it would have been after the first court case filing um, when they said they could keep the lights on. We saw a few cent move up. I was hopeful, but it did not happen, guys. And right then and there, I said, something's up. And then we get this delisting notice. Now, maybe it came out because some people are saying that they knew about it. But guys, I was busy, very busy trading that day and didn't have time to be looking at every filing. I often don't until after the market closes. But I believe that the reason it didn't is because people knew it was going to be delisted as of the 20th from the NASDAQ. Now we're going to go over those filings and we're going to discuss risk here because there's a lot of people that are buying this up right now. And I urge you to be very cautious because I think that you're following Hopium. And at this point, taking an L sucks. It absolutely does, and it didn't feel good to me either. And it doesn't feel good that a lot of us had done a ton of DD, spent a lot of time on this trade, and really thought that they were going to find a buyer. Guys, the bottom line is they don't have a buyer or they would not have filed this bankruptcy. They would have just been trying to hold on because nobody wants that status attached to their buyout, okay? And that's going to devalue this stock, unfortunately, and devalue this company. Um, it's not going to hold up to the same value it may have got previously. Now they're in desperation mode because guess what? They don't find a buyer and it's most likely going to be a take under, not a great deal like people were talking about and expecting, okay? They're in a bad situation and they know that the bottom line is the court's not gonna let them continue to keep their lights on forever. They're gonna give them a certain amount of time to find a buyer and if they don't, guess what? If nobody steps in to take over this company, then there's a big problem. Now, had they decided to appeal the NASDAQ, I think things could have been very different because in my opinion, then we may have seen a smaller company that wants to be listed on the NASDAQ come in and buy them out just for the ability to have that NASDAQ listing status. 
But since they didn't appeal this, that takes that off the table, which is a huge, huge mistake, in my opinion, on AVCT's part. But guys, we have no control over this. Obviously, I never would have picked this as a play of the week had I expected that the week before they can file an offering, which I was very clear to everybody about, that they would be filing an offering because they need money. But to see them do this the week before they're able to do that tells me that there's something very wrong here. They're done. They're done caring. This company is not in a good place, guys. Bottom line is if they cared at all about the shareholders or they cared at all about trying to save this company or get a great value or had a potential buyer on the table, they wouldn't have filed this bankruptcy a week before they could do an offering. This is the last thing I expected. Yes, I knew they desperately needed money and couldn't make it. And I was very clear about that and why they needed to do an offering. But to do this, it makes zero sense. And the only thing I can fathom in my head as I'm trying to wrap it around it is perhaps the company shorting them is associated with the company that has those warrants and they're doing a big F you to them. I don't know, but that's the only thing I can really get in my head as to why now because it's really eating me up. It's the last thing I expected. Yes, did I know it was a possibility? Absolutely. I mean, if you read any of the filings, you'd have to be um, out of your mind not to realize that that was a risk. It was very clear. But guys, they were searching for a buyer and obviously they have some big wig names that they do business with like Microsoft and AT&T. And to think that they couldn't have gotten something, even a take under to save this position, I don't even know how to explain it. And I think that this is going to eat at me for many, many months to come now because it doesn't add up in my head. But guys, right now, I had to admit for now we're defeated. Do I, if I see a run coming, sure, I can day trade it. But over my dead body, am I holding this overnight right now? It's certainly not in a large position and 140 shares is nothing. Um, you know, that's fine. I already lost this much with it. I don't care. Um, you know, if that goes down a few more cents in the meantime, okay, so well be it. But I may also sell it and buy more Hellbiz come Monday morning if I see it continue to go down. Is there a possibility that the hedge fund that has the warrants still tries to exercise them yes guys but it's very very low i don't really see this happening with this play because the short interest as we're going to go over in this video is only around seven point something percent at least the disclosed short interest and guys there's going to be more people shorting this as it rolls over into pennyland they do not have to close out their shorts let me be very clear about that they do not need to close out their shorts okay it will roll over into otc land just as your longs will and they're going to ride it down to next to nothing okay if anybody thinks that that's something different and has it in writing i'd like to see it because everything i've seen so far with companies in this position is the same thing that shorts are not required to close um and guys you know, it, it is what it is. I don't know what else to say about it other than it's really awful and um, unexpected. I mean, yes, financially, I knew it wasn't a good situation. That's obviously why they're selling. But this is just plain old ugly. Let's take a look at the listing. I want to break it down for you. And I want you to understand because I see tons of people still buying this up. Guys, if you really want to hold it into bankruptcy and into going to OTC, you know, fine, you want to think there might be a run, there's a slim, slim, and I mean like a 5% chance we might see something, okay? And that would only be if they're able to get buying volume to step in and buy this up and send it. Um, but to be perfectly honest, given the time frame, I don't really see that happening. Um, you know, yes, there's always a chance, but the risk versus reward to me, it's not there, which is why I made the decision that I did. And again, there's nothing wrong with ever selling and being able to buy back in if you start to see it running. Obviously, I'll be watching that up until the 19th just to see what happens. But if you hold this the night of the 19th, when you wake up, your shares will be in the OTC. And I can promise you that day, it will plummet and plummet hard. So if you really want this stock and you really think that they're going to get some value, again, I personally am not touching it unless maybe it goes to like a couple of cents, um, then maybe the risk might be there for me. But other than that, no, no, thank you. They've made it very clear that 
the company doesn't have the value that we all think it does at this point. And I'm telling you, the bankruptcy makes the situation so that it will get a take under, not a takeover. One other thing, guys, real quick, is that I care about everybody in this community, which is why I'm still talking about this and making this video. I'm not trying to induce fear or fear mongering like some people are saying. I'm telling you the reality of a situation. And I know that there's a lot of people that are riding you on Hopium right now, but you need to look at the facts and they speak for themselves. So please understand, I took a big L myself and I don't like it. But guys, I need to make it up in another play. That's the reality of it. And I've done most of that on Friday. And I have a little bit left, but most of it's covered. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity in this market right now. You'd, you're better off to be left with something to be able to make it back with than nothing. Okay. Now, it states, as previously disclosed on January 11th, AVCT and two of its subsidiaries subsidiaries, excuse me, filed voluntary petitions for bankruptcy under Chapter 11. On January 11, 2023, the staff of NASDAQ determined that the company's common stock and warrants will be delisted from the NASDAQ. In the delisting notice, the staff of NASDAQ referenced the bankruptcy petitions and associated public interest concerns raised by its concerns regarding the residual equity interest of the existing listed securities holders and concerns about the NAS uh, about the company's ability to sustain compliance with all the requirements for a continued listing on the NASDAQ. The delisting notice also indicates, pay attention here, that the company may appeal NASDAQ's determination pursuant to procedures set forth in NASDAQ listing rule 5800 series. Pay attention here. The company will not appeal the determination. Okay, guys, they willingly are not appealing this. So they are saying they don't care. Okay. This is a big F you to shareholders because they took away that ability for it to run at all. Now, trading of the securities will be, will be suspended the opening of business January 20th, 2023. So what that means, guys, once again, if you hold this January 19th overnight, you don't sell by the end of day on January 19th. Then when you wake up January 20th, your stock will be OTC and it will most likely be listed under AVCTQ because it gets a Q for bankruptcy assigned to it. Now, there's another play out there, ENDPQ, that is a much different situation. And there's a lot of medical companies that are looking to buy this. And it's also got beat down to like seven, eight, nine, ten cents. Now I think it went up Friday to like 12 or 13 cents. But guys, see how it fell before it's going to rise at all? And it's taken months for it to do that. So I'm using that as a comparison to tell you, if you really want this stock badly, you really should consider getting rid of it and buying it back in OTC land when it hits a bottom. Um, because even if you go and you look at the Revlon, it's like R-E-V-R-Q, I believe, chart. You can see that even while it's been in OTC land, it dropped and it dropped hard. And then it's been rising oddly at different strange times. Who knows why? You know, I'm just looking at a chart to try to give you a comparison. But it's going to plummet, in my opinion. Um, that's what you have to see this week ahead. And is that worth the risk? Why continue to lose more? If I were smarter, I knew to sell at 125, guys. I really did, but I really was hoping that something would come positive in this, but it doesn't look good. So I said, I can't continue to let this drop. And that was a risk I knew at that point that I was taking. Um, you know, but I also know that I really believe this is going down to single digits, if not 10 cents. 20 cents. I don't think it's going to more. Yes, there's a strong community, but there was an even stronger community in Revlon and look at what happened there. So please, please look at some charts that have done this. There was a strong community in ENDP and look at ENDPQ, same thing. So I'm not pulling this out of nowhere. I'm not trying to create fear. I'm trying to let you know a reality before you lose everything. 
All right. No assurance, however, can be made. Oh, um, hold on. Okay, this is what I want to say. No assurance, however, can be made that trading in the company's common stock on the pink market will commence or be maintained. Guys, that's saying that there's a risk that it may not even start trading on the pink sheet or be maintained there. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but that statement right there is very concerning to me. Again, do you really want to hold into the risk and have it not be there? Because that's going to happen or that's a potential that could happen. I'm not saying that's going to. I think that's more unlikely than likely. But could there be a reason they're not allowed to go to OTC that they're not disclosing and they're using this statement around it? Maybe. I don't know. But this is just something to keep in the back of your mind too. If you really want it that bad, think about waiting till it gets there and gets to that bottom. Uh, the company continues to face certain risks and uncertainties that have been affecting its business and operations. And these risks and securities may affect the company's ability to enter into a sale transaction and could impact the outcomes of the cases. All right, guys, they're telling you right here, loud and clear, they're struggling to get a buyer. Yes, I know there's interest, but likely these parties do not like the terms and know if they wait a little bit longer, they're going to get a whole lot better for them because they will have to sell off their assets at a fraction of its value. That's the bottom line here. And I'm just being as real as I can. And I think I've always been transparent with you. All right. The company continues to fade. Okay. We just did that. Um, sorry. Holders of the company's equity securities will likely be entitled to little or no recovery of their investments. Please understand this loud and clear. You will likely be entitled to little or no value, no recovery. That means nothing, little or nothing compared to what you invested. We've already lost a lot, but it can get a whole lot worse if it goes to nothing. Because remember, they're going to pay off their debtors first. Shareholders are last to get anything. All right. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just trying to find where I am. Uh, okay. The company cautions that trading in the company's securities, given um, the pertinency of the cases, is highly speculative and poses substantial risk. Like I said, right now to me, the risk does not seem as great as the reward like the risk is too high for a potential reward which at this point i don't see much of one guys unless for some reason they try to run those warrants but again like i said i think there's less than a five percent chance of that happening you never know crazy things happen in this market every day but i assure you if they do that it's going to be to create more bag holders because there's a lot of people out there that will FOMO into the play, maybe not realize the situation because they didn't go read the filings before they FOMO'd in. Or maybe, who knows, people that still have hopium in this play are thinking, oh God, something good's going to come and I'm going to hold on to it. Guys, please, please listen to this. Please, I'm not pulling this out of thin air. I'm showing you facts. <sighs> And I don't like making this video. Trust me, I really, really don't. But I want to protect you and make you understand. And please keep in mind, if it runs, why can't you ride a run and go back into it if that happens? That's the way I'm looking at it. So consider that option as well. And again, I'm not telling you to buy, hold, or sell anything. It's your money. You need to decide to do what you want. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't make that decision for you. I'm telling you how I played it because I think I've been very open about, you know, I've been holding it this entire time, guys. And yes, I saw the decline, but I really thought we were going to get a buyout here. I truly did. I'm truly very shocked by this. But now I have to look at the situation at hand and hopium is not there, guys. Um, it's just not worth the risk for me. And I think you need to read this and understand why I feel that. It's too risky. Trading prices in the company's security may bear little or no relationship to the actual value realized, if any, by holders of the company's securities in the cases. Accordingly, the company urges extreme caution with respect to 
existing and future investments in its securities. Guys, they cannot make it any clearer to you about what's happening here. Um, I don't know why I highlighted this, but I said actual events and circumstances are difficult or impossible to predict and will differ from assumptions. Many actual events and circumstances are beyond the control of the company. Again, guys, I think this is kind of a warning as to say, you know, the reality of it is the stock should probably be trading between 10 and 50 cents right now. Um, but why is it trading higher? I don't know. Maybe, maybe people aren't aware of the filings. Maybe they buy things and they just forget about it and go back to it and check on it every quarter, like a lot of people, or every year, like a lot of people do with investments. But again, being in this play, they should probably be checking on it more often. But guys, you know, this is also probably a warning too that maybe they do try to run this for those warrants and create a lot more bag holders. So again, please know that yes, there's a small chance that that could happen, but they would have to get something to drive momentum into the stock. And if you look, there was an article that was put out on Friday. And yes, I know that these people like to create hit pieces, but I think that there's a lot of truth to this piece as well, because it's a different scenario, but I don't agree necessarily for the reason why. But listen, is it likely ABCT stock will undergo a squeeze? The short answer is no. While other companies caught up in bankruptcy news have seen the price of their stock soar, that doesn't seem likely for AVCT shares. And one of the biggest reasons for that is the lack of short interest in the company. As of this writing, Fintel reports a short interest of just 7.6% for AVCT stock. That doesn't appear high enough for traders to jump on the stock as a short squeeze opportunity. What's next for AVCT stock? In the last couple of days, are anything going to go off? American Virtual Cloud Technologies is going to see the price of its shares continue to fall. Not only did the stock lose roughly half its value yesterday, but it's down another 14.1% as of Friday afternoon. All of this comes as shares of AVCT stock see heavy trading today. Now, guys, why is that heavy trading happening? Well, there are likely some shorts that just said, I made my money and I want to get out and it's a long weekend. So they were buying back as people were selling. And I believe that that is what you are seeing. Um, I believe that there's a lot of shorts, those still opening positions because they're going to ride it down into OTC land where it gets to next to nothing. Now, guys, again, these Investor Place likes to put out these hit pieces. So there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, they're just trying to prevent the squeeze or they're just trying to um, deter people away. No, guys, the reality is, is this is different because things that are running like BBBY and PRTY, they haven't announced bankruptcy yet. There's rumors of bankruptcy that sent them diving. And then people are riding them up on hopium and on, you know, short interest. They're squeezing it on short interest right now. That's what's happening in those stocks. And those will continue to see volatility. But if a bankruptcy filing comes out, you better believe they're going to plummet hard again. You know, and, and then depending on what they do, if they actually fight for shareholders and want to continue listing and fight the appeal and are able, you know, to drag it out at least, then you'll see wild rides up and down in that stock. It'll happen in both of those, in my opinion. But if it does something like ABCT, where it just files and a week later is getting delisted, it doesn't have the time to create that momentum and that drive into this play, guys. It's very different, unfortunately. I hate to say that because trust me, I was hopeful too, but I'm not anymore. I know there's a slight chance, but very slight. All right. Remember, there's a 30.22 million free float and it traded 8.55 million shares on their continued decline. But people were buying this up again in after hours. I'm still asking myself why. And that's the only reason I have a little bit of saying chance that maybe they try to ride it, run it, guys. Just that littlest slight bit of hope. Please, I did not hold on that little bit of hope because to me, it's more likely it's going down. I want to be very clear about that. So I hope you're hearing the entirety of what I'm saying. Now, 
52 week low is 70 cents, 52 week high is $30 and 75 cents. Again, guys, that doesn't take in the pre-market trading where it dropped to like 40 cents or whatever it was on the day that they announced this. Now, just to show you technically, this is telling us it's giving a strong bearish signal. Short and medium term, this will continue to fall according to Weeble's technical analysis. And again, to show you, the short interest is 7.64%. There are still 100,000 shares available to short. And oddly, on on Saturday, they added more. How that happens, I don't know, but it is what it is. Um, and the cost to borrow in this stock is 31.88%. As you can see, in the past two weeks, it's gone down from 40% to 31 Yes, it is up slightly from the day prior. don't understand that. But again, a lot of people, I think, are borrowing it to ride it down to nothing. The short volume ratio, as expected, has been extremely high between 48.89 and 60% of shares traded in the dark pool have been shorted. Guys, shorts probably aren't going to stop in this because they're going to try to ride this down to next to nothing because they know what happens. And for those of you spreading rumors that I'm shorting it, I've never shorted it. I will never short it. Have no interest. It's not enough of a mood to me. My money's better spent elsewhere. I don't want to play a waiting game on a few cents. All right, AVCT does not have issues with failure to deliver right now, guys. So that's not going to come into play either. Like I said, it looks very dim. Please just err on the side of caution. I can't be any clearer with you. Best of luck to you guys that, you know, have still held this. And I don't know what else to say, but please be careful. Please don't fall for this hopium that's going around the internet because the chance of it happening guys is very slim okay and i i'm not hopeful and its value is likely to be next to little to nothing for shareholders all right enjoy the rest of your